Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're going to take a look at a new Tiny SA. This is the ZS407. It goes to 7 gigahertz. I want to compare this to the other models, tell you what's different about it, then we're going to do some RFI hunting and see just how noisy this RV park is. Time to play with some toys. All right, so in the past, I've kind of stolen stuff out of this kit, but you guys have seen this one. This is my Tiny SA and Nano VNA Go Kit, and I've got these little mesh bags up here to hold all the different pieces, parts that you need in order to be successful with these guys, and it keeps them a little protected. And because the ICOM 705 doesn't have a tuner built into it, I carry the Nano VNA with me in order to check out and scope out my antennas while I am out in the field with that one. So that is this case here, and for this one, I will leave a link to that video up in the top corner. Then we upgraded, and we got the Tiny SA Ultra. Ooh, look at the Tiny SA Ultra. This one handles a broader range of frequencies, so you can do your entire harmonics test on two meters in one sweep. And then I needed a new case for it, so I did some exploration and found this thing here. This is a really neat 3D printed case, and it holds all the accessories again, your stylus, your antenna, your adapters, a little SMA wrench, and then I've got my DC pad in here. But one of the problems that I had with this case was that it wasn't really big enough to hold the attenuator that I use. So now I have this with a bad attenuator because these things can go bad, the good attenuator, and a decent dummy load in there, and that all fits. And I'll show you, I'll show you how I store this. Clear plastic ammo case, tiny SA, nano VNA, all the attenuators, tiny SA, close the lid. If you like the Tiny SA case here, he's got these in a variety of colors with or without the name inlaid. And you can also get a Nano VNA case. And this is for the H4, but he also makes it for the other size Nano VNAs. And I will leave some links in the description down below for this stuff here as well. But what I wanna do is I wanna see if the new Tiny SA ZS407 fits inside of that case. And there's been some talk online as to whether this is a 407 or a 406 or whatever. So there's some confusion as to the name, but we got it in. We need to play with it. We need to talk about it. We need to share it with y'all and talk about what all you get in the box. Oh, hang on, hang on. Ah, do that one nice and fast. No calls for alarm from the other room or anything. And they are the same case. So that is perfect. On the top, it says, oh, hi. It says, uh, ZS407 spectrum analyzer, 100 kilohertz to 7.3 gigahertz. But what I wanted to know was, is it the same size so that I can tell that it can fit in this case? And it can. So fantastic, now I need another one of these cases. Okay, so that problem is solved. I'm gonna take the non, you can see there's no writing on the top. I'm gonna take that and put it away, put it back in the case along with all of its stuff over there. Oh, well, before we do that, I got these guys here. So this is a single 40 dB attenuator. And there isn't any reason why you can't stack these things. So I got two, oh, these are so cute, they're so precious. These are little 20 watt attenuators, 20 dB attenuators. So you have 140 or you have two 20s. Oh my goodness, these are so precious, look at that. They're just, they're just so precious. And then on it, it says 20 dB, six gigahertz, 10 watts, SMA, JK. I guess JK for just kidding. But man, those are, those are freaking tiny. That's crazy. And the reason I wanted to get the smaller ones is because I wanted them to fit, oh, perfect, inside the case. The two attenuators side by side in the case, along with the adapter to the most common antenna type. And then this piece here has got some magnets on it so that it snaps into place and keeps your stuff organized. And now that is absolutely perfect. I have my 40 dB of attenuation to replace my 40 dB of attenuation. That can go in that case and stay in the storage and now I don't need to worry about it. And then these two here are good to go. I guess there's a ZS406 and that goes to six gigahertz. But you know, what's a gigahertz between friends? Accessories in the box, you get all the standard stuff that you always got with this thing. USB cable for file transfer and remote control, union and the antenna, SMA cables. This right here is the stylus. This, I used to just call it a guitar pick, but this is called the touch plectrum, touch plectrum. Okay, 
That might be a translation issue. Don't know. Maybe they're right, and I've never heard that word before. I've never heard the word plectrum before. So there you go. I actually like to have this on here because the more you touch the screen on the tiny SA, the dirtier she gets. The stylus for the one and only time that I'll use the stylus. Insert the touch plectrum through the loop. All right, there we go with that. So this does everything that the tiny SA Ultra does, except it goes to 7.3 gigahertz. The tiny SA Ultra does everything that the regular tiny SA does, except it goes to a gigahertz frequency, and I forget what it is off the top of my head. But the problem, problem, when you had the regular Tiny SA version was if you were testing harmonics on say the two meter band, the harmonic itself was actually out of the range of the low port. So you had to do all your work on the low port, get one sweep, and then do a second sweep of a frequency of 144 megahertz range and then you wouldn't see the first harmonic, you might not see the second harmonic, but you'd see the third, fourth, and fifth. So you had to then com composite those two charts together and it was a pain. So it was worth it to do the ultra. And then this one here goes even higher for you gigahertz boys. All right, what I am going to do though, however, is I'm going to resurrect one of my old cases and some of my old friends, these mesh bags to put these accessories in so that I don't lose them right out of the gate. So there is the SMA cables, there is the union, there is the antenna, the stylus, and the USB cable. Get that zipped up. And then this is another case that I had for this from before. And the cool thing about this is this will fit the 40 dB pad in there. And then it will put the accessories in the top. I put the zipper side down so it's not gonna scratch the screen. And then, we are good to go with our tiny SA. And the red matches the red, which of course matches the red of the best radio ever. So we are good to go. Everybody does a demo of this on the how to do the harmonics thing. And I am one of those everybody's. I did one on the original tiny SA and I did one on the tiny SA Ultra. But what I'm gonna do with this instead is I'm gonna do some RF hunting, some RFI hunting in the RV park and share some of that with you. Because one of the other things that this thing comes with that I didn't get a chance to show you because it is baked in is, it comes with a 32 gig SD card for storing images. So we'll store some images and I will share them with you as we walk around the park. So the first thing I wanna do is put the, I guess technically the first thing I wanna do is calibrate this thing. Let me calibrate this thing and we'll come right back to the, the meat of the video. and they want you to visit the website for the unlock code. I won't show it to you here, but I will put it in and unlock it. And now it is in ultra mode. I'm gonna set the start for three megahertz. I'm gonna set the stop for 30 megahertz. I'm gonna turn on the waterfall. We'll see a waterfall down here at the bottom, which is pretty neat. And then since this thing is connected, it's giving me hopefully absolute silence. Put the antenna on. All right, now we will go hunting for noise. So one of the first things we have is a solar charge controller and we are at eh, minus 75 over here where it's starting to hear some noise and you can see some chatter on the waterfall. Right next to that, we have an unshielded electric load device that's converting battery energy into heat in the room. And you can see we still have that same noise up there around, it's actually a little quieter. It starts to creep up in front of the solar charge controller and we move away a little bit and it starts to go down, but it's not bad. I mean, it's minus 75 dB, that's fine. Let's see how noisy my wife is. Oh, wow, oh, sorry. All right, inside of an RV, we have this little distribution panel. The top of the panel is the electric circuit breakers and fuses for the DC side. So you got your AC side here and your DC side there. Beneath the panel, hidden behind here, is the boondocker, the device that converts AC shore power into DC power to charge the battery and also to charge all the DC appliances and light fixtures and so on inside the RV. That is below minus 90. So there was some, some noise out there with the solar charge controller, but not a whole lot. And then I am going to pause the sweep. So we have that and then I think it's under storage, save capture. And we're gonna call this panel, all right? It has been saved to panel.bitmap and we'll bring that up on the screen for you. How about we take a look at Great White and see what kind of noise she makes. 
All right, so we're in the truck now, and we are at minus 95 or so on the meter. That's with the engine running. I don't expect it to get quieter with the engine off, but she's a nice quiet truck, okay. Let's check out the bike too. So we are at minus 95. I can read the screen in the sunlight, but the camera likes to focus on my reflection in the screen. So minus 95 across the board currently. We are in neutral. There's fuel injectors didn't make a blip. Starting her up. Oh, turn signals on, turn signals off. And we're still at minus 95. Get down closer to the engine. And we're still at minus 95 up here towards the fuel injector and the spark plugs and the ignition. Still minus 95. Stuff is nice and quiet these days. We'll get out here to the business end of the RV. This is what they call the pedestal, this metal box. Since it's all in metal, I don't expect much, but I'm still seeing minus 95. There's a little bit of a spike right here in the middle and it just moved when I moved my finger. Yeah, my finger being close to the antenna. Changed that around a little bit. Waterfall looks pretty decent down there as well. Let's come over here. This is the electrical panel for this side of the campsite. Let's take a look. We're still minus 95. Take a look down here next to all these antennas. And we are still minus 95. Okay, even the big green transformer is still minus 95. Now we're on the workbench and we're underneath the LED lights. And what I wanna do is turn the lights off So we didn't really change much. We were slightly above the 80 line, and now we're still somewhere around the 80 line. Turn the lights back on. Yep, not much of a change there. I gotta tell you, honestly, I was really surprised that the RV park wasn't that noisy. I mean, it was wind noisy, but it wasn't RF noisy. We were down in the 90s the, the entire time. Every single test was down in the 90s, except for the charge controller, which is sitting directly behind the camera right now. And that charge controller wasn't actually charging any batteries. Uh, let me let me check real quick on charging a battery, hang on. All right, I don't have enough hands to do this, but this is three to 30 megahertz test, and we are somewhere below the 70, minus 70 noise level. So I need to sit you down for a second, one second, and then we will plug in. All right, the battery is now plugged in and the charge controller is gonna to have to figure itself out a little bit here. Is this battery full? All right, we're putting 17 amps in the battery. That's good sun, but that's not a whole lot of noise. E00 means no error. No load, no load amps, the battery's in float mode. 28.5 volts from the solar, 14.2 volts to the battery. Battery's full, and we're putting 17 amps into it. It thinks the battery's full because I just plugged the battery in, and it ain't smart enough to know what's going on. Okay, so it's easy to disconnect this while we're looking at the SA. I can do that one-handed. So we're at minus 70. You see that, that number one marker floating around there? And I just unplugged, and we're still at minus 70. I mean, so it's not minus 95 like it was without the charge controller in the room, but minus 70 is still pretty good. Let's do the waterfall, play waterfall, big numbers. Ooh, wow, check this out, big numbers. Okay, get rid of big numbers, let's put on waterfall. Big numbers and waterfall are incompatible with each other. All right, so we've got a waterfall full of data. You can see some noise out here towards the end. I'm going to attempt to do this one-handed. I need an assistant. If you do apply for the assistant job, it's mostly glorious work of connecting power pole connectors. So don't expect it to pay too much. Yeah, I don't see much difference on the waterfall. I can't stop the load tester from doing a test. We're currently 63 amp hours into a test. I need to finish that up because this is a 165 amp hour battery. It's gonna take a while. So there is the test of the solar charge controller doing its solar charge controller magic too. And I don't think it really changed all that much. So I'm pretty happy with it overall. And this is pretty close. Obviously the farther I get away from it, when I was back at the panel, I was 35 feet away and it was minus 90 back there, even with the things that should be generating noise back there too. So fairly quiet stuff overall. I'm 
pretty happy to see that. There is going to be some links in the description down below for all the stuff that I showed you, all the different cases and whatnot, and for the ZS407 Spectrum Analyzer. And I think if you're gonna get one, you might as well get the, the best one that you can at the time that you can get it, because you're gonna use it for a long time. I use it for all kinds of stuff. One of the things you, you can do with this is you can use it to squirt signals into your radio, and you can verify how low your radio can hear. So when it says it can hear down to minus 120, you can prove that it can hear down to minus 120 by whispering at it real loudly with the Spectrum Analyzer. You can also use it as kind of a signal generator for other hobby tasks. And the Tiny SA plus the Nano VNA combined is a powerhouse of stuff that you can do with just RF test equipment that would have cost six figures, $100,000 a couple of years ago. And now you can put these things in your pocket and carry them with you wherever you go. One of the things that people always ask me is where can I get one that's not a clone, one that's not bad, one that's not, you know, screwed up some way. How can I be safe? If you go to the tinysa.org website, you will see there is a list of places where to buy. This one comes from my friends over at CCSEESII, -E and they are on that list of approved authorized places to buy from. So with CC, you can be safe. And I've got a link for the Amazon store for CC, the jungle market version of this from them. As safe as it can be. And if it winds up not working out, Amazon's got a fan fantastic return policy for you. This year, I am on a mission to reach 100,000 subscribers and you can help. If you click the subscribe button down below the video, there's no cost for subscribing, but it makes me smile every time I see that little number go bloop, bloop, bloop. And we are on our way. After you're done that, there is a video right over here that YouTube thinks you should watch next. I kind of agree with them sometimes. We'll see you over there. Thanks for being awesome.